this video, I'll be describing the iLogic code for the board configurator rule, which is one of three rules so far that have been created for the Shaker Table blogtorial series on our website. If you haven't done the tutorial yet, there will be a link to the beginning of the series at the end of this video. You can also just go to the opendesignproject.org and look for the drop-down link to the series, which is currently here. On to the code. The first block of iLogic code sets the shared variables that set the active state of the board features to true or false. Notice that the boards 1 and 2 are not represented. This is because at the minimum model width, the first two boards are always there, so their features will always remain in an unsuppressed state. The first line of code after the if statement checks for a minimum width that is equal or less than 12 inches. And if that is true, all of the iLogic code below it until the first else if statement is executed. The next line divides the board width parameter, which controls the width of every board, by the overall width parameter divided by 2 which in this case makes the two boards at this configuration equal in size. All of the board variables are set to false at this time because they shouldn't be present at this width. The only ones that should be here at this width are the ones that can't be turned off, boards 1 and 2. Moving down to the first else if statement. This chunk of iLogic code looks for a width greater than 12 inches and equal or less than 18 inches. If this is true, the overall width gets divided by 3 and the board 3 shared variable gets set to true. That's what this big block of code does. It checks the latest width that the overall width has been changed to and turns on or off the appropriate board variables. As you can see, each line looks for a 6 inch step in width and if true divides the board width parameter by one more increment then adds another board to the mix. This goes on until we get to the bottom of this code block where we have all of the variables set to true at the maximum width and the end if statement ends this code block. In the second block of iLogic code we use the true or false variables that we figured out above to turn on the features needed to create the boards and their chamfers in the model. Each one is an if statement that looks for the true or false state of a particular board variable, then applies some iLogic code, or skips the code block. The first chunk of iLogic code is the odd man out here in that it controls features for two boards, boards 2 and 3. This is because board 2, although always present, has a chamfer on its long edge that needs to go away if board 3 is present. All of the boards have a code block that shuts down all of their features if the board is false. And this first block merely combines that code with a little bit of code needed for board 2. Moving downwards, you can see that there are two chunks of code that control each board. The first one, described a bit earlier, turns off all of its features. This is needed when reducing the overall width variable to shut off the boards and their chamfers that are no longer present. The second chunk will turn on the board and the two end chamfers if the next board is there as well, or the board and all of the chamfers if there is no next board. This code is repeated for all of the boards until we get to the last one, which has no possible boards coming after it, so the chamfer feature itself is the same as the chamfer feature on the first board and includes all three edges. It's either chamfer on or chamfer off. That'll wrap up this iLogic code rundown. If you're seeing this on YouTube or if this is embedded on another website, the full tutorial can be found at opendesignproject.org. Look for the Shaker Table blog tutorial series when you get there. There are many other tutorials there as well, so go check it out.